What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Savage Tech once again, and if you're anything like me, buying a product and then getting home only to find out that you can't use all of the advertised features really irritates me. With that being said, welcome to my review of the NVIDIA RTX 2080. Welcome back. So if you guys are looking at this card right now, we'll go over the quick specs. You're looking at 2,944 CUDA cores with 60 RTX ops, which nobody really knows what that means and we can't test it. And eight giga rays a second, which also once again, we can't test it and there's nothing to really use there. We have an 1800 megahertz boost clock, which we'll talk about here in a second. Eight gigabytes of GDDR6 on a 256 bit bus. And some of the more interesting changes include outputs where they did add a USB type C connector, but they also still have the traditional HDMI and display port. The power is going to be requiring a six pin and eight pin PCIe power connector and you are going to be looking at 225 watt TDP. The next biggest thing that they changed here was swapping to dual axial fans. They are 13 bladed fans with a vapor chamber for the cooling solution. And we'll talk about that here in a second as well. But before we hop into that, I'll talk a little bit about the test bench. The test bench that we are using is the ASRock Z370 SLI with an Intel i7-8700K clocked at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, 16 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator Platinum, and that is clocked at 3200 megahertz. We did load all of the games onto a solid state drive, specifically an NVMe drive, because I wanted to make sure we weren't having any issues loading in 4K textures, and I noticed that a couple games were having, or at least struggling, with uh, the standard 7200 uh, RPM drive that we have in there for some of our 1080p testing. So we resolved that with the NVMe drive, and then we kind of got into testing live on this channel, which you guys are always welcome to come by and check out. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be throwing up any charts, and the reason for this is putting up all the charts is time consuming. You guys can go check them out pretty much everywhere on the internet right now, and we really need to address different issues. If you're wanting to understand performance for this card, it's very simple. It's a GTX 1080 Ti that's not fully matured. And so what I mean by that is, it's when it performs, it performs on par with the GTX 1080 Ti. However, there are multiple cases that I've found so far in my testing where the card severely underperforms or doesn't work at all. And we're gonna talk about that as well. So first off, we do have the synthetic benchmarks that we'll go over here with you guys. And if you're taking a look at the synthetic benchmarks, time spies and so on, in Firestrike, which is a DirectX 11, Benchmark, you're looking at a 27,000 GPU score, which falls significantly short of the GTX 1080 Ti, about 3,000 short, where the 1080 Ti is at about 30K. However, once you move to DirectX 12 and Time Spy, the RTX 2080 does beat out the GTX 1080 Ti, albeit only by about 700 points, and that's gonna be with a score of 10,804. Now, if you guys have been playing recently or playing around with a lot of games and a lot of different titles, you're probably in the same boat with me as far as running primarily DirectX 11 because the performance is better and you get rid of those hitching problems. So DirectX 11 performance is still very, very relevant. And I think that having the RTX lose out generally in DirectX 11 or other legacy DirectX versions is a pretty big deal. When I was taking a look at Batman, for example, Arkham Origins, it was having a, a lot of trouble and struggling keeping above 60 FPS. So those 1% mins were hopping down into the 40s, where on the GTX 1080 Ti, it has no problem keeping 1% mins of 60 FPS. So, and this is all at 4K, by the way, because I feel like if you're gonna be purchasing this GPU, 
a, you probably have something like a 1080 Ti and you have a panel that you wanna push and that's either gonna be a high refresh rate 1440p panel at like 144 hertz or you're gonna to wanna to be pushing 4K. Me personally, I have a 4K monitor, so I was testing for myself to see if I would even want to keep a card like this or return it, essentially. I was trying to make that decision. We did check out V-Ray Performance, and V-Ray Performance was um, on par with the GTX 1080 Ti as well, and this is gonna be for a lot of workstation loads. However, the GTX 1080 Ti did beat it by one second, so keep that in mind, even in traditional workloads for uh, workstations and this kind of setup, you're gonna wanna be probably on, well, if you're not on, a specific like workstation card like a quadro and you're going to want to be a little cheaper you're still going to want to go with pascal at this point especially when we get to blender because once we started to try to test blender unfortunately blender doesn't even support the rtx series yet and that's where i start talking about things just not working and things not being mature enough to actually put this card into a production environment and by that production environment i mean into an environment that you want to use daily for regular tasks or whatever your tasks may be including gaming now it's very frustrating because what i wanted this video to be was okay we have some hiccups here yes the 2080 only performs as well as a 1080 ti where in the past you know we had the 1080 beating the 980 ti that's all shifted and changed and that's okay because we did get more performance and we have ray tracing. Let me show you some ray tracing or some DLSS. And unfortunately, none of that is present. There's no place to go get it. I can't find demos for it. If you guys know somebody that has demos that I can run and test, let me know in the comment section or DM me on Twitter or even email me at blindrod at sonofatech.com. I would really highly appreciate it because I want to see it, but I can't. And there's no support for it in Shadow of the Tomb Raider yet either. And this is really a big problem for a product launch that doesn't improve upon traditional performance over the last kind of top tier card. Now, the argument would be that the 2080 Ti is the fastest thing out and that if you really wanted to purchase one, you want to purchase that, but you're going to be talking about a significant bump in price up to $1,200. And I get the e of owning that, but if I wanted to just get access to RTX features, then I could buy the 1080 or the 2080, excuse me, and use it, but I can't use it right now. So I, I don't have any real reason or content to bring you guys other than the traditional performance, which you've seen and is not that impressive as it were. The biggest notes that I want to make here though, is that if you currently do have a 1080 Ti to stick with it, because there are other problems and bugs going on with the RTX 2080, that are gonna prevent you from playing some of the games at the performance levels that you're used to. One of the titles that I did notice was Destiny 2. I just wanted to hop in and play some after a cool down session for the benchmarking and it won't even do 1440p on like medium settings above 60 FPS. And there's no real way to pull, if you guys didn't know, there's no hooks that you can use to get into the API to measure performance outside of using a capture card and I don't have a really expensive capture card to do that with. So I can't get you good performance data on Destiny 2. It's all um, subjective at this point, but I can tell you that the 1080 Ti performs much, much better. 1440p 60 FPS is not hard to hit on the GTX 1080 Ti. And I messed with settings and tried to get it there, tried going down the low there's something wrong with the driver for the RTX series and Destiny 2, for example. There's something wrong with it for Blender. There is there is something wrong with it for legacy DirectX 12 titles. So we're talking about DirectX 10 and prior because we see those issues with it dropping off in 
Batman Arkham Origins, which it should be able to run fine at 4K. And this is all cautionary tale of, you know, wait for a little bit before you purchase this card. I don't want to dog on it as much as I feel like I'm having to. Like I said, what I wanted to originally do was come out and be like, yes, it's meh, okay performance, but we got really cool tech to try out here. And I don't have that yet. Apparently we're going to be a month out. So unfortunately this is my day one review. We're going to call it a day one review of the RTX 2080. And my verdict is if you already have a GTX 1080 Ti, keep it and wait. We'll see what happens with ray tracing and DLSS later on. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. I will try to go ahead and put some slides together for performance later, but I think we need to wait a little bit for at least a second driver or something because I'm, I'm, it needs to at least be fixed in legacy DirectX titles for us to test all of that properly and I don't feel like it's there yet. I think it's really, really high up on their priority list to get DirectX 12 working and I, I don't think they fully vetted everything for the driver for some of that, uh, the older, older DirectX titles. And then with Destiny, I, I don't know what's going on. I, th I would have thought they would have been fully prepared for that title and they obviously aren't so uh, eh. you you would think that the amount of time they spent with this card and the new technology that they would have been more prepared for launch i don't know what to tell you i'll see you next tuesday